It is May the 24th, 2021, and you're watching The Future of Photography. Also listen. The Future of Photography. <laughs> Also listening, this is true, yeah. Um, this is a, a, a podcast. podcast. A podcast, by definition, yeah. kind of is audio, right? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is like watching a podcast. This is what you're watching like. a podcast. Well, you, but that is a good reminder that we do have our own uh, YouTube channel. And if you are on YouTube and you uh, you you can spare a click of your mouse, then do that. The subscribe button. If it's red, then you're not subscribed. It's that simple. So we would appreciate that. And uh, if you're not subscribed to this audio version of the podcast, then you can find this in your podcast player, wherever you find your podcast. So that's that's the that's the that's the promotional <laughs> part that's over. The <laughs> that's the shill over. That's the shill over. Short one this week, I think. As you can tell, usual. we're not doing a podcast on marketing. <laughs> <laughs> not really. We're really bad at it. So um, very very bad. Anyway, no, we do a podcast on photography and uh, the, the future of photography. And last episode, we talked about um, HDR, low dynamic range, high dynamic range, standard dynamic range. Kind of the different things around Can that. I and missed it. Ah, too bad. You'd have really enjoyed it. <laughs> you really would have done. I know. I'd say I would have. <laughs> well, it was it was kind of fun because we all we all figured out that the the. Well, no, let's 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 just let's just smoothly glide into this episode because um, we're going to go a bit deeper, a bit more practical. Let less bit of the yeah. less of I the have theory. A question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, no, just from my sense of it, which isn't very great, I have to say, um, is it true? Like, if you don't have a monitor that can handle this, the video that you're shooting, then what's the point? <laughs> like, are, are monitors? behind the cameras tune in to yeah, last are, are week's they? episode for all the answers yeah <laughs> well you know in my research for last week's episode to be to my credit which i, I thought i was going to make um i did watch some stuff to try and educate myself on it and that was one of the things that i kind of took away from it was there's that a bit more on that it, today Emma, actually so okay. all, yeah all good. So i mean the, i shall if, be educated if you more. needed a one word answer to your question the answer would be yes <laughs> that it's that it's that it isn't worth it if your monitor can't display it because it's all about brightness and if your monitor can't go that bright you're not going to see the benefits. On but, the other hand, your phone is probably well capable. Well, of, absolutely, uh, yes, and that's yeah. that's where we get. That's a very thank you, Jeremiah. That's a very very good segue. <laughs> no problem. As Chris <laughs> says today, today less of the theory today and, and more of the the practical or the or as I like to call it the so what. So you know all of that stuff that we talked about and geeked out about last week. Uh, yeah, so what. Uh, so what can we do with that as as consumers uh, and and uh, uh, you know uh, less less about the uh, the professional side of, of video production, which is something that personally I'm not qualified to to talk about. But I have been playing around with the consumer tools available. Uh, yeah, so hopefully be able to take all of that theory from last weekend and make it relevant this week. And just. Just to make it clear, as HDR is like there's HDR photography and HDR videography, we are going to talk about HDR videography today, right? Yeah. Which I learned is a completely different thing altogether. Sort of. So sort that of, was yes. my first learning. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. It's, yes. So we are. This is definitely about uh, HDR video today. Uh, specifically, I'm going to step through the workflow uh, of how you might capture. Uh, edit and and publish HDR video uh, and some of the uh, some of the little tricks and, and tips and things to watch out for along the way um, some of some of the gotchas uh, and Ema's already asked a, a very very pertinent question about displays and and monitors and things like that because that that's definitely there so. Uh, uh, it's, 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 I'd like, uh, at some point we're going to have to invest as a team in, in some kind of Android kit, aren't we? Cause you know, uh, you know, there's a raised eyebrow from Chris there. He doesn't like that idea. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure where you're where going with that. Well, just because we get everything we talk about is relates to Apple equipment because that happens that the four uh, of us are all happy Apple users. Or one, one, could, one could think that we might be a bit biased there, right? Mm. 
Well, certainly we, are, if not biased, then we're certainly much better informed about you know how how to create a workflow such as this through you know, using mm. AppleKit. Um, I, I do know that actually most of what we've got here today is relevant uh, to people with Android phones. If you happen to have an Android phone that can capture HDR video, the the rest of it is is all relevant apart from the capture bit. So, well, Adrian, also about. to to build on that. Um, I did an experiment maybe two or three years ago where I was traveling. I had to travel for um, a couple of weeks. I didn't feel like bringing a lot of kit. And I I have a uh, Chromebook, which I picked up for like $200 um, loaded. And I wanted to see if the Chromebook could manage um, whatever I was doing, whether it was editing text, whether it was uploading, whether it was kind of capturing images, uh, you know, input and adjusting them all with with Chromebook based apps, which is Google based app, apps. And um, after maybe a week or two of kind of exploring the kind of landscape, I found it really fantastic. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was the kind of computer that literally could throw in your suitcase. You know what I mean? Because because if anything got damaged, theoretically, you just pick up another one and boom, log in and everything was exactly the same. <laughs> There's nothing really on it. I had a little kind of um, um, chip and SD, you know, SD card, which I used for both memory and inputting uh, from my camera. And I found it worked very, very well. And maybe, maybe the way into this is really not specifically through Android, but through Google and Google Apps and that, which will segue to that. And that could be interesting. I'm by no means an expert, but um, it is very um, user friendly once you get into that uh, workflow. And um, I think it's maybe a little more limited uh, when you start talking about security and things like that. But what the hell? Well, yes, there we go. Something for future shows then to it, yeah. we need to do a bit more research on that stuff before we can talk knowledgeably about that. But uh, right. uh, yeah, but so, certainly we can talk about a, an Apple based workflow today. Um, so, OK, first step then, uh, uh, I'm going to ignore pre-production because it you know, pre-production isn't done in HDR as far as I'm aware. <laughs> It's done with things like pencils and crayons and, and people sitting around meeting rooms mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So so we're going to ignore pre-production. We're going to go straight to shooting or capture. And sounds good. First off... Oh, sorry, Chris, go. I said sound, sounds good. Oh, sounds good. Okay, good. Right, so here we go then. Uh, first off is uh, what are you going to capture it with? Um, in, in my case, it is a phone camera, and as I'm sure you've all guessed by now, it is my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, I believe that um, most of the current iPhones have this capability uh, to, to work in HDR. Uh, and it's not just the, the Pro Max or the Pros I that can do it. I think even since the 11 that was included, I believe. Ah, right. Well, Ema, you have an 11, don't you? Yeah. Can I do that on mine? Because I don't know if I can <laughs> Well, here we go then. Okay, so yeah. this is the I'll first test I'll look it up while, while you yeah. talk. So it's, it's, it's a setting. It's base, It's just a setting. Uh, so uh, you can go into There's settings setting. and into the camera settings on your phone. Uh, and there is a toggle there for capturing video in HDR. And and you just switch it on. and uh, and Smart HDR, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you have yeah. it. Okay. Great. So, so that uh, and that's it. Um, and uh, you yeah, know that 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 is that will enable your your a... video camera to uh, on the phone to capture in HDR video. And more about what that actually means in a minute. But uh, uh, it works on the the Apple camera app, um, the the native the native app. It doesn't do it in slow motion mode. So it'll do it in in normal video mode, but not in slow motion mode. I've noticed it won't capture HDR there. I guess there's possibly just too much information, but I'm not so sure. So just just to uh, fill in that in, that information, iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. That's when HDR starts. So yeah. my my simple plain standard iPhone 11 doesn't do HDR just yet. Ah, okay. All right. So it's so pretty. So where do one, I then. find the setting? Because it's. The smart HDR appears to be for photo capture rather than video capture, or is it the same thing? Mm, I think on mine there's a there's a separate one for capturing video, so may, you may yeah, need to look no, in video settings rather than camera. In the in the um, video settings, I've got choices. I've got 4K at 60 FPS, and that's the the highest. 
It would be a different one to that one because that relates to you. Which stuff. iPhone do you have, Emo? 1080 at 60. 11 Pro. Oh, the Pro. Yeah, it should have it. Yeah. Mm. I'll, okay. I'll figure it out while uh, Adrian yeah. talks. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so it should work if, if, if you have a Switch, uh, if you have the right iPhone and the right operating system, uh, and you can, uh, uh, the, you can just simply switch this on, and then in the native Apple camera app, it will work uh, in your video mode. As I say, not in slow-mo. Uh, if you're the sort of person that likes to capture video in third-party apps, I've tested it with two others. Uh, Filmic Pro does explicitly support it. It's buried a little bit deep in the menu system in Filmic Pro, but it is there um, and it will capture it. Uh, but you don't at that point then get your 10-bit you know, log in, in Filmic Pro. It, 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 it captures it using the HDR instead. Uh, it's not currently supported as far as I can work out by the Moment app uh, or, or any. Uh, and those are the, the three that I've looked at, really. So so if you have one of those apps, the native, well, you have, we'll have the native app. Uh, but if you have Filmic Pro, you'll definitely be able to use it as well if that's your preference. Here it is. Okay. I found it. Oh, why don't it's I in have settings, that? camera, record video, tap HDR video. And it says it's turned on by default. So... Let's you should already. Okay. Do it. There we go. For those of you on YouTube, it's on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <Well, laughs> for those of you listening, it's on well, the I just, screen. I just, <laughs> said, I just said where it is. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have it. Is my iPhone not 11 Pro? Yes, it is. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Something. Hey. Don't play the intro <laughs> I'd again. Return, I'd return it. <laughs> yeah. Get a. Get a. <laughs> better one new version <laughs> okay well i'll tell you what so so just just one last thing on shooting then um before before we go into to talking about some other stuff um you'll see when when you're shooting it your screen becomes brighter and when you play it back in the photos app uh your screen will will have a boost of, of brightness uh to show this hdr video that you've captured it's really quite noticeable i have to say for me personally it takes it took a little while to get used to it, but if you watch it for a for a short while and get your and your eyes and your brain get used to it, then actually going back to to the normal standard uh, dynamic range footage makes it look all very you know grey and dull and lackluster. So it's uh, it, it's not something that you'd be wanting to mix. You know, if if you've got a video you're going to make, you don't really want to be mixing the SDR and the HDR because that that will that will be very jarring. Uh, regardless of of what your narrative is, I think it would be very jarring. Can I ask a simple question? You can try. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, it will be a labor. <laughs> what what would be one's uh, excuse or reason, uh, depending? Um, to actually use HDR when capturing video in one's planning? Well, that is a good question, isn't it? Um, I, I am unaware of one other than personal taste. Because it's there. <laughs> it's an aesthetic. It's an aesthetic. Like a like a frame rate uh, can, you know, can, can be used to uh, as an aesthetic. Um I mean, yeah. If you read the the marketing blurb from people like Dolby, of course, it is the future, and everything must be as bright as your your local galaxy cluster. Um, <laughs> but uh, as to how real any of that is uh, is going to become, um, you know, is, is it is it uh, is it this decade's three D television, or or, or uh, is it something that's going to actually you know, develop some traction and everybody's going to be like this in a few years? I don't know. It's a good question. Do you, do you have it, a few? Isn't it, isn't it, well, isn't uh, the kind of uh, pre-programmed HDR uh, a, a way of circumventing the limitations of the capture chip in order to create an illusion of greater gamma? That's the tech way of expressing it, I would you agree? Didn't we didn't uh, we discuss you know, that yes the last episode? And we did that. Didn't last we want to? Didn't we, we want to go practical but, but we, this stuff around? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we didn't. Well, I, I'm getting to the practicality if that's ever possible with me. But but it's kind of like shattering this illusion. For example, is it better just in pulling out your phone, your your video capturing device, with whatever you use, or an ARRI, or you know? whatever it is, and knowing for certain that the shadows 
with an exposure, automatic or otherwise, are going to block up. And you have to lift them, and there's danger, danger on the highlight end. Or is it best to capture it in the most um, kind of fundamental raw way and then adjust the tonality later on in uh, the multiplicity of video applications and color timing applications that we have. That That's really the question. Would you be bothered doing it? And does it artificially limit you in making that decision? Can we can we come back to that question at the end? Because we're going to go no. through the workflow no. and the tools <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> no? I think okay. I, I know what the problem was, well, why I couldn't see it. I may have to reset my phone for this. But in it says that it needs a high efficiency file type. And I had it set to the other, ah, the other setting. There we go. So ah. HDR video, it's still not showing up. I'd say I might have to turn it off and turn it back on again. Uh, so that's Probably. interesting. Yes, I should have pointed yeah. that out. Actually, yes. So it, it will only record the HDR video uh, at if you are recording to the high efficiency, the the H two six five codec, um, it doesn't do it in H two six four at all. Yep. I can play. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so so Jeremiah, I, clearly uh, collectively, we don't have a good response, a good answer to your question. Um, uh, you know, no, and, and I guess no. uh, of us, you might have more experience in making those kind of selections. In, you know, when when. Uh, working towards a new production, I guess. What what do you be what, your view of, of this? Well, you know, I have a um, my my own view is how quickly in recognizing a moment can you pull out your recording device and capture what it is in front of you. So the the kind of instantaneous uh, capture, whether it's photography or or video, is something that in a moment is going to be uh, important. On the other hand, if you're entering into a a world that you are trying to create a specific aesthetic, then your planning in terms of locations, lighting, etc., are going to influence how much you are going to preset your applications or use other applications and integrate that, which we'll get into in the post-production mm. process. So it, it really depends on how you use video, how you capture it, what your intention is. My own feeling is the fastest, most um, easy, less friction, uh, friction or a frictionless way of capturing video is always preferable to futzing around with dials and futzing okay. around with, okay. with, well, so with things certainly... where you don't know what's yeah. going to So I said I can certainly involved. answer that. So the 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 trick there on an iPhone would be to set it such that it remembers its last settings. And then whenever you boot into the native camera app, it will just simply be there. So yeah, and I use this when I when I am out for the day shooting video, for example. Yeah, I always make sure that that is switched on. So whenever I go into a ca into the camera app, it's always set to video straight away. Uh, so it's so in that sense, oh. I think certainly an iPhone can can give you a, a an HDR setup pretty much instantaneously or as fast as it will boot. So mm. interesting. Okay. Well, that, uh, can I ask you, how, I didn't know that you could set up your camera so when you hit the button, it, it will automatically launch into a specific Oh, that's a job for Chris. <laughs> Chris, we need another screenshot of some instructions, please. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Let me Google it's in there, there somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's in, well, while Chris is finding that, it is, it is, is in the settings. Is it just the one that, is it in the settings? Because yeah. sometimes if that happens to me by accident. Like if I've taken a video or a, a time lapse or something and I close the camera, I open it up again and it comes back up on the time lapse. So that it's so like where I last left it. It is a setting. Yeah. It's one that yeah. I prefer to leave that setting on so that mm. you know it remembers. Uh, the de the default yeah. I think is it just goes back to photo. There we Open go. the settings Look app. Go to photos and camera. Tap on preserve settings, and then you can switch it so that it will preserve the last mode that you used. I've never known wow, about you this. Le learn 
learn something we, every we are, day. We are learning all the things um, um, that that Adrian was not here to talk about. So it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> You're shooting it's okay. torpedoes at you all the time. Half, a, the half an hour in, and we finally learned like how to we're switch our cameras on. You know, for everybody that, that wants to have a go. Uh, I really like this. I um, like it. Mm -hmm. So, I, so would you agree that I could set it on, say, the two point five lens uh, at I don't know, you know? Yeah, I think it does remember the lens selection as well. Uh, it'll remember Fantastic. it'll remember the mode selection and the lens selection. I think you can you can you can set it to remember the camera, the creative controls, the exposure adjustment, the camera mode, everything. I'm there. It is. I won't do it right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> and and just for just because uh, there are other options and there are other operating systems and other apps, both Filmic Pro and the Moment app have presets for camera settings as well. So you can record a preset and you can and you can get to it just with a, a couple of touches on the screen. Um, I find the the Filmic Pro one easier to set up because you've got uh, the the Moment one seems to be quite selective about what it will. Um, uh, what it will capture in the preset, and it's it, it's a bit. Uh, I, I haven't got the, my head around how to get it to do what I want it to do yet. Well, wouldn't that ma anyway. wouldn't wouldn't it be kind of tied to what lens you're using that you're applying to your camera, your ex your your uh, additional lens with the moment? Uh, oh well, I I don't have actually I do have moment lenses, but the 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 very old original ones, and of course they were a different mount, so they don't work anymore. Um, uh, but just in the moment app, you can save camera presets for video, uh, so you could say okay. I want it at you know, you know I want it twenty four frames at a forty eighth or something like that. Um, but in in Filmic Pro, I find it a bit easier to do. Mm -hmm. I have one, for example, that sets it at twenty four frames, a forty eighth. Uh, the log v3 um, setting uh, and uh, a daylight white balance so I can get some level of white balance consistency if I'm just out and about shooting. So mm. I do that and it all just clicks in and as long as I've got an ND filter on the front of it then it can be you know, then it then it all works. I feel my life is changing. <laughs> <sighs> well you know <sighs> <laughs> okay well so have we all agreed now that we know how to switch our cameras on <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of a photo workshop that i that someone told me about where, where they know, spent yeah. the entire first day learning how to import photos into photoshop or something uh, love it. anyway okay. yes we do know mr teacher that's okay nice. all right well what's next so okay so just just a little bit just as a bit bit of a callback to last week and just just so, so what's going on there and la last week we talked about we talked about the the standards uh, of, of hdr and particularly we talked about both brightness and color spaces uh so just a just a quick note to say that iphone hdr video is set in the rec 2020 color space which if you remember last week that was the one that didn't even fit on the screen it was such a large color space so many options available uh but i don't think that the camera uh, as as we said last week doesn't actually capture the the full range the full gamut uh, uh, of those colors it's just simply not able to do that and i think it captures something closer to the P3 color space, uh, which kind of would make sense because most of the screens that you'd be viewing on would be capable of P3 color. Um, the in, an interesting thing is when you get this stuff back into your Mac, um, so QuickTime, which a lot of us will will be using just to play ad hoc video files and things like that. QuickTime can sometimes get a bit confused uh, when you're doing things like editing and exporting files and stuff like that because some of the metadata saved in the file. Um, but the good news is is that uh, if you're shooting, certainly with the you know. Uh, the Apple native camera app, um, it'll have the right metadata with it and QuickTime will recognize it and play it, play it nice and bright for you. So, but there's a whole bunch of stuff around QuickTime, which we'll, which we'll get to later. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's, that's just a little, little technical call back to last week then. So the next, next step being editing. So I've tried this in a few apps 
Um, uh, and I've tried it on uh, a phone, an iPhone. I've tried it on an iPad and I've tried it on a MacBook. Uh, and of course, they're all, they've all been bought at different times and they've been built to different specs and you get different results and stuff like that. So just before we talk about how it all went, just a quick note of the kit that I've tested this on. So first of all, I have uh, an M1 MacBook Pro. So it's sort of the one I bought very recently. Um, this has a screen capable of 500 nits. Uh, brightness so not an hdr screen which um, sort of minimum h for hdr would be a thousand nits as we discussed last week and it has a p3 color space uh, the iphone 12 pro max has a screen that is capable of hdr uh, it, it has a an 800 nits uh, brightness as a typical but if you're playing or recording uh, HDR video it can boost its brightness up to 1200 nits so it's technically right up there in the HDR space in terms of the brightness that screen is capable on and that maybe Ema is an answer to your question which is okay. your TV your TV would probably at this point won't be capable uh, of it unless you've bought a rather expensive TV very recently mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, but your phone uh, may well be capable of it because it's capable of shooting it. It's capable of playing it back. So, um, so how come the technology that they use in the phone screens is not the technology in your TV? That's about to change. Mm -hmm. but, That's about to change. It, it really has to do with pixel density and mm. price of manufacture of as well. Cost of manufacture. Well, cost of manufacture, I should say. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, think of how much an iPhone costs, and then. Yes. Think of a forty-eight inch TV. Yeah, your screen. Yeah, your phone is six inches yeah. across. Your TV is fifty mm. inches across. Yeah, it's like, mm. <laughs> it's mm. it's quite a, a quite a big difference. Uh, mm. So, but but the phone is capable of it. And lastly, I tested it on my iPad. Now, my iPad is a twenty seventeen iPad Pro, uh, ten and a half inch, uh, and that has a display that is capable of the color. It's a P three color, but. Um, it's not capable of the brightness, so so it is. It does look different um, when I play the videos on the iPad. So if I go through having a look at this, uh, first of all, uh, first app I tested uh, is Luma Fusion, uh, which we've talked about quite a lot on this podcast over time um, and this is a really good news thing um, so luma fusion <clears throat> like a lot of video editors you you don't have to set the tech specs you can just leave it and say you know set the tech specs for the first bit of footage that i import um, and i did that specifically to test it to see what was yeah what it what was i importing into luma fusion and it came in and it says uh it says uh, if you let Luma Fusion work it out, it says it is a wide gamut HDR high log gamma. Um, and that is uh, something that is it's a setting that is cap uh, is compatible with the HDR stuff. Uh, it, uh, it's, it refers to a Rec 2020 color space and, uh, and a sufficient amount of HDR uh, brightness. So, so that's good news. Because that means you're, net, you're, you're editing now your video that you've shot um, in an app that is capable of handling all of that extra brightness and, and color and information. Um, and that works really well. Um, uh, it even exports it like that as well from LumaFusion. Uh, so you can do a whole editing workflow with all of the, the, uh, the actual editing and then the effects and the color and everything you want to do in LumaFusion. And it all works great. Um, as I said, though, don't mix non-HDR footage in there because that'll just look really dull. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you're in if you're working with HDR, you know you have to work really with, with everything in HDR. Um, uh, so it's that that that's one of the uh, going back to Jeremiah's question about why would you choose and what would you choose um, if you knew you had to put into, into an edit some non-HDR footage, um, you might choose to shoot non-HDR. Or do what they do when you see an IMAX movie, which uses old 16 millimeter. They basically reduce it and frame it so that it, it basically points at the difference in quality, which yeah. I think is very effective. You could, yeah, certainly in the narrative, you could do that in that, you know, in a, in a narrative film, be it fiction or documentary. I guess that would work quite, quite nicely. Um, mm. 
uh, yeah, so de- definitely some options, some, some creative options there. Um, uh, again, so just uh, another thought, uh, of course, as and this is one that Ema's already mentioned, is that actually you need to be in the high efficiency codex. You need to be in the H.265 codex and you need to export your edits that way as well, because if you export it to a lower codec, it loses all of the information. Can so. I ask a question about that mm. as someone who has never... Uh, shot or captured or edited in this Kodak. Uh, part of my reason is I'm not sure how widespread the uh, the take up is. So I don't want to put something out there that <coughs> only a few kind of mm. Apple geeks on the mm. iPhone 12 mm. can can <laughs> see. And and what does it mean when it's transcoded, uh, etc. Um, what do you lose? What do you gain? And and and, and so, what is the fundamental difference uh, visually? A that you can see between the two codecs, um, and B, have you seen the uptake in this overall in the culture or the te- techno culture? That's a really good two so, really good questions. So visually, um, there is not much difference. But the file sizes are smaller at the same quality. That's the main difference. So it's it's it preserves um, the same information, but internally it has also the capability of uh, shooting of, of storing lossless. So there is a is a, a more um, a more varied kind of compression. Um, Apple does have a some mode but i haven't really played with it where you can set it so that if you that it internally will use that high efficiency codec um at least for photos and then when you export it will automatically transcode them to jpeg so it's more compatible so that's compatibility thing uh for video mm, i don't i'm not sure you don't get well i don't think any of the apple apps um, you know, for phones and iPads, let you set any of those. Um, LumaFusion does. LumaFusion, like a like a fully fledged desktop NLE, will allow you to set color, space, and and everything else as part of an export. Um, uh, it it uh, but but if you uh, my best understanding, Jeremiah, is that if you export it to H two six four, that's not capable of carrying the HDR information, so you that would lose true. that. Um, as to uh, as to what you can display it on, um, that's a, a, a really good question. I think the take up in terms of phones and computers and things like that is very high. It's my understanding, but not and not just in the Apple ecosystem, but generally speaking, very high uh, for playback. Um, I'm less sure about uh, you know televisions and things like that. So, do you think that a codec like that and and the kind of research into kind of more efficient, smaller packages um, uh, is a temporary thing because of our, you know, storage challenges on the, on the phone, etc. And that when processing power is massive, when the cloud uptake is just uh, frictionless again, uh, that we don't really have to think about this. In other words, we could basically shoot whatever we need to with as large, small uh, size files to capture whatever it is we want. And we won't need storage on our local devices. It will just go to our own server, to our own cloud or to a general cloud and be able to pull it down. that's, That's kind of how I work anyway. To be honest, um, I work, you know, uh, uh, current projects will sit on my hard drive, but old ones will be in the cloud. Um, the I would say that perhaps given that it's video and given that the file sizes can get very big, it perhaps is more about distribution than it is about recording um, and, and editing. So I would, you know, uh, it, when, when do we think Netflix is going to start streaming raw video? <laughs> <laughs> or ProRes 444 or something like that. I, I, I don't think that's coming just yet, but they are doing, uh, there, are, there is some content now on Netflix, I think, uh, that's available in HDR. Um, I, I don't know what codec they're going to, to use for that, but yeah. I would imagine at this point it's compressed. I mean, I have, I have a 4K TV and uh, my Netflix streams in 4K. So, and most, and the, I think Apple as well. Uh, my Apple TV uh, streams in 4K, um, and and it is on those monitors, amazing. Uh, I see th- 
you know, I see in a few years it will be six or eight K as well. Well, there, there, what, there's a question for you then, isn't it? What's gonna ha- What's gonna be the the thing that leads the race? Are we going to get ever higher resolutions, and therefore we're going to have to stay no. compressed, or are we going to stay? We're going to finally realise that actually, for distribution, a certain level of resolution is fine, and then no, uh, we were definitely going to be there, and because there will be a massive strike of actors going on. <laughs> I, I'm not putting in my contract anything greater than 8K is like I need cosmetic surgery then. I remember yeah. people saying that about <laughs> HD yes. when HD first well, came yeah. in. By the way, you're not alone. I mean, newscasters, all of those, there is, I, I only speak from my Hollywood <laughs> perch here, but but as as the kind of capture and lenses get better and whatnot, we love it when we're watching sports, whether it's soccer, football, baseball, yeah. you know, that, that, that kind of resolution is absolutely fantastic. But we're, when we're watching more moody, more sublimated uh, tonalities uh, on the close-ups, uh, there's a lot of, uh, and has been a lot of... <laughs> yeah. oh, Some that, breath holding. That discussion already started when uh, switch to HDR happened, where y- yes, new makeup yes. techniques had to be developed, and uh, yes, and yeah, and, and, crazy, and also sets. In other words, you, you, yes, they yes. used to build sets that looked pretty well with those lenses and now they'll yeah. look like telenovela sets you couldn't hide things <laughs> you know, anymore with the higher resolutions no. and it gets yeah. more and more difficult yeah yeah it's it is it yeah so well it I, yeah it, it could go any way i suppose i mean you're know, thinking about the stuff that i'm producing which is mostly going to be shared with friends and family of course uh you know most people are going to view that on their phones or their ipads occasionally on an actual computer screen so you know at that point i think you know most of it is going to be uh well if f- phones if they're modern of course will see the the high the high dynamic range uh you know televisions and uh computer screens mostly won't uh, at this point in time but i see a big advantage speaking to that point is is the uh capturing or or digitizing of older films in higher resolution uh, to broadcast on HDR monitors, uh, that gives those films a breathtaking new value. Like if you watch a kind of a new ca- a, a new presentation of The Godfather that that Gordon Willis RIP um, had spent you know many months retransferring it in, in you know and lifting the shadows and ju- because he's a prince of darkness just keeping it <laughs> on the edge. Whereas I mean, unless you saw the very very first print of it projected. You know, as they made multiple prints and it went into secondary markets, a lot of those shadows areas would block up. On TV, you get a a reasonable facsimile of it, but you don't get the the, the delicacy and the nuance of of what the film capture was. And now, with with the new technologies in in video, uh, yeah. it's breathtaking. You can approach and even surpass the original uh, filmmakers you wow <laughs> not sure i got all that in my phone yet though sadly but it was soon it was, coming it's okay soon right coming. moving on a little bit so that was so we talked there about a bit about luma fusion uh, and luma fusion actually reacting to this this material but you know very well and very naturally which was great um i tried uh went, picked up a, a photography app i don't know if any of you use dark room on, on your phones uh, heard about or, it or, or tablets yeah. i got it um dark room is a, is, is actually uh, a pretty good app for working where's, where's the construction <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeremiah. Jeremiah. of course of course no. i don't know where it's coming from it's not, morning it's not there on, is no of course yeah it's not on my thing they said they finished that's all right uh, so let's, let's keep going for our we'll, listeners clear, clearly we'll some people at jeremiah's it. app don't like the uh, yeah mm-hmm. clearly some people at jeremiah's end don't like the dark room app um but uh, <laughs> D- dark room is an app that, that is quite well known and quite well regarded for its ability to process raw photographs 
and it also does uh, minimal uh, video editing so you can do you know, you can use your your normal photographic sliders in darkroom to work on video as well um so i tested it uh with, with the hdr footage and and sadly darkroom doesn't work with the hdr footage yet so um it treats it as if it was just standard dynamic range so so by comparison it looks quite dull and it's, it's a smaller color space etc so so darkroom's not ready yet um i didn't get to test iMovie i meant to test iMovie but i didn't um i would imagine it's relatively seamless because it's all from the apple family but I, I i don't have any information so so if somebody who's got iMovie can have a test of that that would be great um, and then we get then uh, then i brought out the big guns and and started trying to play around with this stuff in resolve and as anybody who who uses DaVinci Resolve knows, um, it is an incredibly sophisticated piece of software with all sorts of configurations uh, available. But you do have to know what you're doing <laughs> because the consequences of your actions can be can be quite uh, quite significant. Uh, so I had this is where I had to do a lot of a lot of research. Um, and uh you know i got uh, and even to the point where i got halfway through the process and i thought it's not quite working it's what, what's going on uh, and then i realized that um uh some of the support for hdr footage is, is only available in davinci studio uh sorry results yeah davinci resolve studio which is the paid version of resolve uh, and i personally have the free version uh ah. so uh, yes, so I, I've uh, happily used the free version through, you know, since about version 12, but we're now on 17 point something. Uh, and uh, I've never needed uh, any of the things that you had to pay the premium for. So I, 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 I happily stayed in the target market for the free version of Resolve, <laughs> which saved me £300, which was nice. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the 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 long and the short of it is, is of course, that Resolve is is absolutely capable of dealing with all of this stuff and more, uh, right the way up to very professional levels. Uh, I've, I've put in the show notes uh, a link to a, a good YouTube video where somebody who clearly does have the studio license uh, takes you through all the ins and outs and how to set up Resolve to work with i specifically with iPhone HDR footage. Uh, and how to handle that and a lot of that's about you know getting your your color spaces and and your luminance spaces set up right so that it can do the it, it can process the the footage you give it in in the right way so um there it is all it, it is all there it is all there yeah it's a, it's a fantastic video this one i watched it at least twice and it's a 30 minute video so <laughs> <laughs> there's a it's 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 very information dense <laughs> i was uh, good. Um, there's, there's, good. It, it is it is good there's, there's a lot in there so if, if anybody's interested in using resolve uh to work with this kind of footage then i would recommend wholeheartedly going to watch that video and and more i mean there there are there's there's uh there's quite a lot of good stuff out there of course on the internet about resolve there's less about working with hdr footage i found it was quite hard at points to research this stuff. Um, but uh, I would imagine that will change over time, of course. I mean, we use Resolve. Resolve is really a de facto professional, you know, co color tool, shall we say, yeah. um, that is capable of pretty much everything. And, you know, you can also, if you're very serious, you can get little controllers for your color. Yeah, hardware controllers, yeah, with yeah, your co hardware are, color wheels and things like that. If you're like doing that, a yeah. lot of work, uh, it makes a big difference, it's a lot easier um, yeah. to manage that. And and um, But yeah, it's a fully functional, really but amazing. The, but the basic version things. that's free is already very feature-rich. It just... Oh, it, it is, is. It's, it's, it, yeah. which is why I've managed to use it for years without ever needing to, to upgrade to the paid version. I mean, that's how they get yeah. you. Now you need it for HDR, and now you need to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know what? I don't, I don't have any problem with that. You know, it, if, if I get to the point where I need it, and I'm going to, I'd be very happy to pay for it because I've had a huge amount of value out of using that software mm -hmm. over time, you know, and I know we live in an, uh, in a world now where people you know you know don't want to pay for software and if they do they only want to pay about three dollars for it yeah <laughs> yeah but i mean we're into another space too just to, just a little parenthetical that nowadays you know uh on the app store uh you go in you go oh wow that looks really good hi pipe hype you go like 
and it says get, you have to really drill down to find out what the cost is. And of mm. course, some of them don't even allow you to to use it for a few days free. And all of a sudden you're yeah. looking at like, yeah, this is like $40 a month. Mm. I mean, you know, for me, that's outrageous. Mm -hmm. Um Maybe not for the developers. Who knows how much they've spent to develop it, but not to be front and center with. Uh, well, I cost. think you'd rather just lay out the money up front and have the software instead of uh, yet another subscription because there's like so many subscriptions that you can have. The thing is, it's all of. moving towards subscription mm, now. That's the, mm. the it's the bundling, and I, you know, there's yeah. there's a few things that I do you know, uh, subscribe to that I find very, very valuable. Um, mm. But others where I just want to try it and use it and yeah. get addicted to it and then go, wow, yeah. this is really value added. Some of yeah, them are yeah. very uh, insidious. They don't allow you to undo it so easily. Mm. Or so, so I do have one, one little tip in this area, which is mm. that uh, certainly on an Apple device, uh, on a phone or an iPad, you can make you can set all of your subscriptions to not auto renew yeah. so if you want to try something out for a project let's say you've got a, a, a photo project and you want to use an app for it and the and the the app is i don't know 10 pounds dollars euros whatever mm. or maybe you maybe it's it's one that's priced annually but it's like 20 dollars you know for for, mm. for the year you can and you think Do you know what I, I don't want to be sucked into a subscription but i'm prepared to pay that to get this book out the door or mm. whatever it is that mm. you know that i'm doing my my annual family calendar with photographs on it or whatever it is that you you know that, yeah. that is your project uh, you know then uh, if you set them so they don't auto renew you'll never get caught in the loop um, mm -hmm. but it, but it is it, yeah it, it is a strange one i think it is it is an outlier that something that is so sophisticated and so powerful uh it is still still has a really usable free model and and kudos to black magic for you know for however many years ago they bought da vinci but um uh kudos to them to keeping it all alive as uh, uh as a free thing that's very usable um i love it you know the, the even in the free version the power of the coloring tools is just phenomenal it really is um you know uh, even especially with secondary colors yeah, and and the thing I love in it as well is the the power windows and tracking and stuff like that. When you've got a video, so if you want to brighten somebody's face, but they're moving through the frame, it'll track exactly. that automatically with one yeah. click. You know, it's yeah. it's quite astonishing how powerful it is. Um, so, uh, in it, uh, it is certainly is powerful enough to come back to. <laughs> what i thought was the topic of this conversation when we started out on it um it's it, it's certainly powerful enough to deal with all the things that hdr footage can uh can, can throw at it um it, uh, but it, it you do have to buy uh, the upgrade for that so uh, yeah so this is this, that's a, a bit of a, a trip through through the workflow um and we've touched on yeah just just to finish off we've touched a little bit on the presentational aspects of this um but we didn't really sort of do it do it in full i i think you know what i've learned with with my testing as as, as i've described it is that you can work in a complete hdr um oh hello jeremiah's construction friends are at it. <laughs> so so what i've learned uh from, from my own testing do you have a is mute button jeremiah <laughs> uh, yeah Use it. Excuse oh, me. there we go. There we go. Sorry, sorry. You'll just have to listen in for a bit, Jeremiah. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so what I what I've learned is if you have a fully HDR workflow, so let's say you shoot using the phone and you edit in LumaFusion, you export to uh, you know to a wide gamut. Um, the you you get all the benefits of that if you have a screen that is capable of displaying it. So if you're watching it on a phone, it watch it. Um, but when I've moved it around to my other devices. Uh, it has still looked good, but it's looked good, but in that smaller brightness range and in that smaller color space. So you don't have to worry about people, you know, getting things that just doesn't work or not being able to view it at all. So if you're interested in trying it out, you know, try it out and you can see the benefit of it. Maybe everybody that you share it with who's got a, a, a new phone, uh, you would be able to mm. see it as you'd intend it. But those that haven't got that kit, 
you don't need to worry about them. They'll still be able to view it. It'll still look good to them. It'll look just good with, for the for the the normal range of goodness for whatever screen or device they're watching it on. So uh, yeah, I was quite heartened by all of that. Actually, it was. I know we've talked a lot around it and dived into some detail here and there, but actually, as a as a little project, a little test experiment, it was actually quite easy. And at no point did I feel that I was going to be swamped by technical stuff. Well, possibly when I was researching the resolve approach, but that's a choice thing, right? I enjoy that sort of thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. There's a little bit that says you know. HDR video workflow, consumer level stuff, because uh, I'm definitely not in the, uh, I'm definitely in the spirited amateur, ill-educated spirited <laughs> amateur category, not a, not in the, uh, not certainly nowhere near the pro category. But isn't it, it is, isn't it amazing that with a little bit of research, all this is now at your fingertips, which, I mean, just five years ago, you couldn't, th th it was unfathomable to, to it, do it, something it like that. Mm. It is it is astonishing. I mean, yeah. you know, the the more I look into to, to just sort of pushing the edges of what some of the kit that that many of us have is capable of, it's 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 capable of just so so much. It's it's mm -hmm. it's proper astonishing, really. It really is. I'm going to go in there and try it. That you showed me how to turn it on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that is that is one of the biggest hurdles, Ema. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, awesome. So now we all know how this works, and uh, who, who wants whoever wants to play with HDR on their well, at this point, Apple devices mostly. At least that's what we talked about here. <laughs> then um, there will be links and hints and ticks, ticks and trips, trips, tips and tricks on in the show notes. This way around. And uh, yeah, so play with it. I think it's a, it's a great, Absolutely. A great uh, chance to learn something new and try something new out. So let's move on to our Peaks of the Week. This is the longest episode we've ever done, I think. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. What have you brought us? Let's start with... Okay, uh, Jeremiah, give us a hand sign. Can you speak or are there still... <laughs> you can speak then. Very quickly. Oh, yeah. Okay, then what did you bring us? Uh, an editing tool. <laughs> no, an editing tool. An editing tool. Um, okay, give... It is called Vegas. It is called Vegas. <laughs> Where is it? Uh -huh. Let me let me open the link here. Ah, here we go. Wow, oh lots going on there. Um, do you want to tell us anything about Vegas? Just yeah. open your microphone. Oh man, they're jackhammering in the alley. That's Monday <laughs> for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a, it, I haven't used it, but I've discovered it and it looks like a fully capable, really ma massive, um, very inexpensive way to edit videos and color change and all of that stuff. Worth a deep mm. dive in. Um, and they're, they have some very interesting videos. And it, again, it's just something that crossed my desk this week and I thought it would be good for um, this particular um, episode. Demora. All right. Very cool. Thank you. Um, Imar, you brought us... What is... I just found this article that I thought was rather interesting, given what we're talking about uh, this evening. And uh, it explained a few things to me uh, about the... the the LCD screens and stuff like that. But um, there's a good bit in this for anybody who wanted to go into it. And there's mention of a chap with a YouTube channel. That looks really boring to me. That <laughs> might be uh, very interesting to other people. He's diving into... He's really diving into all the stuff you've oh, been talking his, about. His about, YouTube um, channel is called HDTV Test. The other. Technical mm. stuff. So, yeah. You, you, wow. you lot might enjoy it. And you, and you read that whole thing? <laughs> That's why I picked it. You read the I whole read thing? it, skimmed. I skimmed it uh, okay, okay. <laughs> about five minutes before we started. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, there's a lot in it. And then he, there's a bit at the end about um, HDR audio. Like, I'm like, oh, I uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. mm. Be a bit more interesting. So, Adrian, you brought us a tool. 
Uh, yeah, well, uh, it, this is just to celebrate one we've spoken about already, which is Luma Fusion. Um, you know, in take, taking the the brief for the show at it, at face value, you know, consumer accessible tools that can help you do HDR video. I was really impressed by Luma Fusion. Using it with HDR was was no harder, not really even any different than using it for normal video footage. So, you know, well, well done them for making it a seamless experience. Experience. And I, I bought Luma Fusion a long time ago. I think at the time it was about twenty dollars, pounds, euros. Uh, I, I think it's still about the same price. So you know, all of that available, really very affordable. Very good. So I brought something that is not uh, related to HDR in any way, shape, or form. It is a camera that was just released. It's this uh, new small. Polaroid Go format. Have you heard of that? A little tiny. I have it. heard of it. Yes, I'm intrigued. I, I really am, definitely. Well, I was so intrigued that I actually got one. Here we oh, go. Oh wow! Look at so you. So it is. It is a tiny. Uh, it's, a, it's a tiny um, Polaroid camera that fits in your palm almost. Um, they Why don't you take a photo of us? Oh no! Are you going to do the flavor flay thing? I will. Chris? I will. I will. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Can I take a photo of all of you? Oh, I have to turn the flash off. Turn the flash off. Yeah, that won't help much. <laughs> hold on. Oh, there it comes out. it comes out. Ooh. And it's it's tiny. <laughs> it's so super oh, tiny. It's so cute. This, this is right next to my face. So it is. Oh, it yeah. is the original uh, Polaroid aspect ratio with the chin and everything, Just, and uh, so it is cute. It's smaller than um, than Fuji's uh, Instax format. Yes, it is a bit smaller than the Fuji the Instax mm. Square, and, isn't it? Yes, I, and I, I and I I, I was. For some reason, I was intrigued because, I mean, it, it, it preserves this iconic look of the format. And I think mm. they have gone after after Instax when they introduced their square format because it was very like the Polaroid format. <laughs> yeah. um, mm. And uh, it, 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 it is now the tiniest Polaroids, actual Polaroids. What's the cost per, per print? Um you asking questions i yes, ordered i can, I can I, look that up while we talk. I, I have seen in the market i have seen in the marketing chris that you know, people wearing it around their neck in a sort of flavor flav style yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. i think i i can just picture you like you need to put I put like it around that. your neck on a gold oh. chain get your hood up <laughs> right and have a walk around the streets so, yeah <laughs> there we go. um it, yeah, it, there we go. It, the, the starter set is 140 euros that includes a uh, Two t two eight packs of film, so sixteen shots. Um, I think a, the, the shot is a wasn't it the about Go like, Film here in 50? the UK is nineteen pounds for a double pack. Yeah, uh, is that sixteen? Yes, yeah, so sixteen shots for nineteen so pounds, is just over a pound a shot. Divided a by pricey, sixteen, that's one eighteen, one pound and eighteen for a shot. Which well, is which things. is but by, by for for comparison is much more expensive than Instax, which is about yes. for that size the Instax is about seventy but pence. It's so, but, it, it's but it's Polaroid. Polaroid. <laughs> ah, anyway, with that, <laughs> and it's fun. <laughs> it is fun, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I it, it it it's mainly novelty value at this point. But hey, why not? Why not? I had to have a toy, and the camera is just the cutest thing ever. <laughs> isn't it it is i love it and it's definitely a good a good one to end a show about hdr video on yes with a new polaroid <laughs> camera as an antidote, as an antidote. <laughs> uh, absolutely yes gives us the the balance we need we need balance we need to strike a balance in all our productions absolutely. don't we that's what we do here we are the most balanced podcast <laughs> out there in the potoverse so yeah we'll be back next week um not sure what about but We'll figure something out. Who knows? Um, until then, everyone, take care, and uh, we'll be back. See you then. Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com Music